Hello and welcome to this Revit tutorial on how to use the add-on Revit extensions and in particular we're going to look at how we add roof trusses to the Revit model. So I've got a sample architecture and model. If we look at it in 3D you can see that I've got a residential house and then I've got a little garage added on to the side. So what I'm going to do in this little video is look at the Revit extensions. Now some people may not be familiar with this, some people may not, but this is a free add-on based on your subscription account. Um, to get it, you can simply go to your Autodesk account, go to the management section, and just wait while mine loads up. I'm gonna filter by my 2018 products that are available to me. Scroll down, find Revit, and then look at the updates and add-ons and you can actually filter in here and if we type um, ext you will see that you get revit extensions for autodesk revit and then simply browser download and install once installed this will give you this extra tab at the top called extensions so i'm going to look extensively at the roof trusses um, so what we can do is we can use a roof element that's added to the Revit model to automatically generate the rafters and the webs of the trusses. We can also put a gable ladder unit in and we can also frame up the um, the gable wall with a, with a stick framed panel. So I'm going to select RAM roof trusses and it will then prompt me shortly to select a roof element. So it prompts me to please select a single roof, in which case I'm going to select this and then I simply click enter on the keyboard. And this will start the roof truss generator that will allow me to configure the type of trusses, um, the size of the, um, the rafter. Um, so let's have a look. What we get in here is we've got three main components. We've got wall plates, ridge trusses, and then we've got roof ends. So we'll start with the wall plate. So looking at this building, um, it's whether we want to place a timber structural element um, along the sides of the the roof. In this case, I'm not, because I'm gonna include that. I'm just gonna use um, probably a wall plate collection that will, a little metal part that will connect it. So I'm gonna say no to, to wall plates. If you've got yes, um, you can go through each individual one and you select the family type and then the instance type that you wish to use. But in this case, no wall plates. I'm gonna crack on into the ridge trusses. So um, if we expand down here we can have a look at we've got groups of trusses where we can control each individual one but we'll select just ridge one generate yes or no so in this case yes we want to generate a truss it has automatically worked out the length based upon the length of the wall so it's automatically worked out the span of the truss based upon obviously the 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 load bearing wall elements so we've got worked out that there's nine trusses and this is where we start to look at the type of truss. Now, the fan truss is shown here where it's a single single web, but I'm probably going to go with um, a fink, where this will allow me to do and choose the amount of panels that I want. So looking at the truss configuration, it's probably a six panel uh, fink truss coming from the apex down. We've got a joint on the bottom cord and then up to the rafter again. And then we can select the parts. So this is going to control the parts of each individual of the web so then we can select the pull down and I choose a size and I'm going to pick probably a 50 by 140 um, sized rafter so just let it load into the configurator in and select each of the types so you can choose the when you choose group one we can choose the the the, the number we can choose the front and back offsets and if we set that to zero and zero um, we can go choose the in each individual type and then we can also go into each individual truss along and see as you highlight them they're getting highlighted on the with the red lines so you can go in and choose different trusses in each individual area and then you can also go in and then set the components of each individual we just make this you can see that you've got the d you can choose each of the individual parts so on the top cord member the diagonal webs and you can go in choose each section if you want then we have any verticals at the end 
and then we've got the bottom cord member so you can create a full range of different size components in with each individual truss and each individual part if you wish so that's the standard truss that's we're just going to go over the standard run um, of, of, of trusses then we look at the roof ends and this is where we can control the gable ladder elements so if we look at the gable end do we want to generate it yes or no in this case yes and we want to go with the standard truss and I'm just going to go with the family type and I'm going to change the size to 50 by 140 and then I'm going to look at the ladder elements this is the the support team can be known as outriggers um, in different places so we're just going to look at it controls the number of sprockets left and right so this is the little guys in here that control on top of the the gable panel and we can also control the offsets and again the type and family if we look at the truss Again, we've got the distance between the webs, and then we can look at the actual size of the component again. If we expand truss, we can go in and look at the webs, and indeed the cords, and then we can look at the gable end on the other side, and we go yes, and we again change the size of the, the components, and again the ladders, we can choose the number of sprockets left and right, and again, same components within the truss. So you've got quite a lot of flexibility in what you can do. So we've got wall plates configured, they're off. Roof trusses are in as pretty standard finks. And then we've got the gable ladder unit. And then we simply just click OK to generate the, the elements. A little dialog box appears. So it will create each of the individual components. And sometimes it will give you an accuracy um, warnings, but not to worry, we can just ignore them. And you can see what's happening. I'm just going to, for clarity, I'm just going to hide off the roof in the view. And you can see what we end up with if I just remove shadows as well, because it's a little bit clear. We get our gable panel. We get our ladder unit. And then we get our each individual trusses. And I'm just going to uh, unhide off that element and... Just detach the walls from the, the roof so you can just see a little bit clearer and we go around the rear of the building and I'll select and detach it from the roof. And once again I'll just hide the roof off again. So you can see that the bottom cord sitting on the wall, we've got our overhang, we've got our upstand and then we've got the individual cords. So it's just a nice quick way to, if you want some extra realism added to your project very, very quickly, is to go in, look at the roof trusses, and we can simply do something very, very quickly like that. So I hope that helps you to um, add a little bit of uh, framing into your Revit model should you need it. If you need any other further assistance, just give me a shout out at Greytech, uh, and we'd be more than happy to help. Thank you.